Hello and welcome to part two of the intro to SSH. Okay, last time we told you a little bit about what SSH is and why you might want to use it. Today we're going to be installing an OpenSSH server on your system, but we're not going to be opening it up to the outside world yet. We're just going to have it on your local network. Do keep in mind that having it on your local network does keep it a little bit more secure because you're not opening anything up to the outside, but there are still risks inherent to it, so do be cautious in doing this. Uh, I'll show you how to go ahead and stop the SSH service when we're done. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and just install the OpenSSH server. Uh, basically, we're doing this on Ubuntu, but just about any distro you go to, it's going to be called OpenSSH-Server. But since we're on Ubuntu, I'm going to show you how to install it on Ubuntu. So we'll go to Applications, we'll go to Accessories, and then we'll go into the Terminal. If you're on a different system, if you're on KDE, for example, just find your terminal there. Hit the Start menu and search for Terminal. It will have one there. I can almost guarantee it. Now again, since we're on Ubuntu, we're going to be using apt to install it. If I wanted to find out what the exact package name was called, we could type in apt-cache search and then type in open SSH. And it will bring up a whole list of packages that have open SSH in the title. You see here open SSH server is available. So I'm going to say sudo apt get install open SSH server. And then in a couple of seconds, it will install a couple of things to the system, primarily the OpenSSH server. Here we go, we've got a suggested packages, but nothing that has to be in there. And it does say SSH start and running. It is running the server now for us. You see here it changed some things in UFW. That means the firewall does have the ports open to work with it. However, at this point, if you do have a router on your home connection, you should be okay against the outside world somewhat. Not entirely, not recommended to, uh, to just do this willy-nilly. Uh, that's why at the end we will be talking about how to stop the server. But at this point, you have an SSH server up and running. You're ready to go. It's kind of difficult to actually demonstrate how you would connect to this system other than to jump out of the virtual machine like we just did, go into another terminal, and you see here I've got two different machines running, my Arch Linux machine with Ubuntu and a virtual machine. Now the name of the Ubuntu virtual machine is U1010VM. So what I'm going to do is type in SSH, the username I'm going to connect as, which is jk 0 the at symbol, and then the place that I want to connect to, which in this case is U1010VM. Uh, in the future, when we're talking about doing it over the internet, that U1010VM can be replaced by whatever internet address you know of. If you have a Dyn DNS address, it could be uh, sshjk0 at thisismyhouse.dynedns.com or .org. I can't remember which one they use offhand. However, since we're doing it locally, just find the IP address or the host name of the machine you want to connect to, put it in there, hit enter. It says the authenticity cannot be established. Do you sure you want to do this? Uh, because I know exactly what I'm connecting to, I realize the name of the machine, I do trust myself, I'm going to type yes and hit enter. Uh, it's asking for the password. This is the password for the JK0 account on the U1010VM machine, not the JK0 account on my machine. So I'm going to type that in. And there we go. We are connected remotely from my Arch Linux machine to my Ubuntu machine. One way I can probably demonstrate this to you would be if I start something on the Ubuntu virtual machine and then kill it somewhere else. So we'll start, oh, the calculator. And now we're going to do a search for the calculator app to see if it's running. PSAUX, grep calc. There we go. You see it says gcalc tool is running. Here is the process ID. So we'll say kill-92717. And it goes away on the virtual machine. Now that's just one of a billion and two things that you can do. Basically any command you can run from the terminal on the local machine, you can run on the terminal from an SSH session. Unless it requires running a graphical interface, in which case you have to do some X forwarding, we'll get into that way down the road. But for the time being, you do have an SSH server up and running at this point. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this SSH session. We'll type EXIT, exit, to exit it. You see connection to U1010VM closed. That is just good practice, just to make sure that all of your SSH sessions do end rather than leaving things open by accident. And now we'll move back over to the Ubuntu Virtual Machine. Now one thing I would definitely suggest doing, and this is sort of stepping in the direction of locking things down, is to go in and edit the port that SSH is running on. So what we're going to do is say sudo nano slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. 
And in this file, you see here at the top, it says what port IP and protocol should we listen to? Now, port 22 is the most commonly used one. It is the standard port for SSH. Don't use that, please. <laughs> So we're going to change that to something different. The Ubuntu wiki says that we should use 2222. Again, that is another one that is really, really common. You could try putting one in front of it. Anything over 10,000 is going to be a little bit harder to find. So 12222, 13333, anything like that. Avoid things like 1337, uh, anything below 1,000, anything below 100, you know, anything that would be commonly used. I'll try to find a wiki article for the commonly used ports so you can figure out what not to use. But this is basically just a port that you would connect to on your IP address for your machine, something you'll have to open up later. So do remember whatever you change it to. So now that we've changed it, we're going to hit Control X and tell it yes to save. We're going to save it as the sshd config. All right, now that we've saved that file, we need to restart the ssh server. And we do that by typing in sudo slash etc slash init.d. Make sure that you know where your init scripts are. On Ubuntu, on a lot of common systems, they are in that init.d folder. In this case, it's going to be ssh within that folder. And we're going to tell it to restart. And there we go. It says it's restarting the secure shell server sshd. At this point, we should be able to type in SSH localhost and have it say no connection refused, you can't get in. And to connect to it at that new port, we'll type in SSH-P, the port number, 12222, and then localhost, since we're doing it locally. There we go, it's asking for the password now. Type in the password, and we are connected locally to our SSH server that's local. You get the idea, though. Basically, you've got a server that is open to the outside world, but it's not really because it is still contained to the inside. Now that we're done with that, we typed exit to get out of the localhost connection. And of course, before we end this, we need to stop that SSH server just to make sure that you're not going to leave anything open just in case. Type in sudo slash etc slash init.d if it is in init.d ssh stop. And then remember that every time you restart your system, that SSH server is going to restart as well. But that's about all for setting up an SSH server. There is a ton of stuff we have to talk about with regard to security. We'll do that in the next video. We'll talk about how to open the port so you can access it from the outside world after we talk about SSH security. We'll talk about sharing SSH keys. We'll talk about, oh, a whole bevy of stuff. Just make sure you do come back. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.